places on earth and the most haunted area in the world due to the immense amount of items all held within this one space. The collection so sinister, it is kept under lock and key, not only to keep people out, but to keep what is held within it from escaping. All items here are considered unholy, cursed, and evil. To touch an item is to condemn oneself, to invite demons and evil spirits to attack. 9 p.m. has always been the cutoff time for being inside the museum, and this lockdown continues until 6 a.m. This isn't about closing the museum for the night, but this is when all of the cursed items come to life and to their full power. The museum in which the tables are turned, visitors do not only look and study each item on display, but the items watch, study, and listen to you. Entering the museum truly alone is impossible. One wrong move, one disrespectful action could mean an attack on your well-being, or even worse, your soul. Welcome back to the Overnight Channel. We're leaving. It's 4.30 in the morning, and I never thought we would ever be here in the first place a year and a half ago, nor did I ever think we'd be coming back here to live inside the museum. We had a rule tonight that we were not allowed to say in the name of, in Jesus, the name Christ. of Jesus Christ. Yeah. And we used minimal protection. Yeah. And nearly from the moment we walked through that door, everything started happening. I haven't been this scared probably since I ran into the shadow man when I was like 15 years old. He cried tonight. But with that being said, starting Friday, October 13th, 3 p.m. Eastern time, we're going into the Warren Museum with every single item in there. All of them, yes, including Annabelle. We're getting locked in there for a 24 seven live stream that we're doing for Feeding America, a charity live stream. They're literally going to walk that door and we will be 100% confined to the museum. Sleeping in there, eating in there, drinking water in there, dousing ourselves in holy water in there. Yeah. And every single night we're going to investigate during the witching hours. If it's dark out, we're investigating. Yep. During the day, there'll be Q&A, special guests, yeah. opening, unboxing, haunted other items. haunted items. Yeah, which I don't know is the smartest thing, especially after that we're gonna have live stream operators yeah. watching every screen switching them around high quality audio that we are gonna be a human experiment because they don't know what's gonna happen and we are the test dummies to see what happens if you live inside of the Warren Museum I'm making a promise that I'm not gonna leave under any circumstance they will have to drag me out and if they have to drag me out, it probably means I'm already supercharged by a demon. So good luck. Friday, October 13th, the stream begins. The more we raise, the longer we'll stay. Yeah. The description of this video will have all the donation tiers. And additionally, every single subscriber that the Overnight Channel gains in the entire month of October, not just during the stream, will also equal one meal donated. Yep. So please, right now, let people know that the stream is happening. This is crazy. Even when we sleep, we're going to leave devices on so that way you guys can listen and see what happens and watch and everything. I don't think anyone has ever done anything like this. And especially here, I don't think anyone else ever will. And to kick it off, the idea I have, and I'm doing this on all my social posts on all the other platforms is, and we're gonna start this right now, this video counts. Grand total for every 100,000 likes and comments combined, right? I'll donate $1,000 to Feeding America to start it off, which means right now, if all of you hit like, if all of you just blast the comments, I don't care if you're just typing www.animal, I don't care, comment whatever you want, tag your friends, yeah. tag other creators. Spam it. Absolutely mind. destroy this. I did this years ago living in an animal kennel for a week straight and I thought that was difficult. And all I had to do was just play with puppies uh, in the heat. Yeah. Enjoy this investigation, enjoy this video. It's actually just insane. And insane. Regardless, we'll see you guys on the live stream Friday, October 13th. I hope we live. Yeah, and if we live, we'll also see you at Phantasmicon and Vegan Sun. Yeah, we'll be yeah. There as well. 
yeah, we'll be there at the end of the show to talk about everything that happened. We made a promise. What aren't you allowed to say tonight? What aren't you allowed to say tonight? Let's say it right now. What aren't you allowed to say tonight? What when, you, when did we make this what promise? Are, we talked about this. We talked about this. If we ever go back, you're not allowed to say it. We, t I, we talked about it hypothetically. We never thought we'd come back. And because I, you never thought we'd come back, you were like, sure, I'll never say it again. This but, was like a year ago but, promise. But now we're back. But now we're back. What aren't you allowed to say tonight? Say it right now. Well, say it. I promise that before every question that I ask while investigating, I won't say in the name of Jesus Christ. Can I please say it a couple times? <laughs> <laughs> you know, just a few times. Just say it in here. Just to get. Just, just say it in here. Just say it up here. He should hear you, right? Yeah, yeah but no, they need to hear me. It's about them here. No, that's the point. We made a promise. We did. We make made a promise. promise. We did. If we ever investigated the War Museum again, <laughs> we did. We would do everything we can to get paranormal evidence and document things as efficiently and effectively as possible. So everyone, please comment down below <laughs> in the name of Jesus Christ. Please just spam it, you know, just so it's out there. That way I can't say it, but you guys can say it for me. So that counts, right? Evan, you ready? Yeah. Apparently there's a bunch of new items here too now. People constantly send items to the museum. Good. Corey, good to see you, man. Thank you for having us back. It's a pleasure. Evan, good to see you. Come over here. Thank you. Good to see you, buddy. I hope you all been good. We're so looking forward to October here for a week and then also Phantasmicon. Okay, Phantasmicon we'll too, We'll be there right? as well, yeah, yep. 100%. So 27th, 28th. We'll be there. It's gonna yep. be our Phantasmicon at the Mohegan Sun Casino in Uncasville, Connecticut. Okay. To get tickets to the Phantasmicon and meet these crazy guys <laughs> is uh, warrens.net, www.warrens.net. You can buy the tickets there. You guys want, I know you're you're uh, dying to go back into the museum, I know that. Yeah. So why don't we go into the museum? Do you guys have any holy water by chance? Yes, yeah, yes, we, we do. do. Or we do? Okay. Yeah. Okay, good. Thank you. Model. And oh. you know how to anoint yourself? Yeah. Yes, I do. Yeah, I'll take another shot. I mean, thanks. Okay. Yeah, good. Yeah. This is like... Uh, Evan? Like, like, <laughs> oh, <yes. laughs> come on. <laughs> I looked at Evan like... The, that again. Here, like, let me get the, uh, let me get the... As long as it's on you. There we go. No, no big dog. Uh, they're, they're, blessed. Yeah, they're blessed. Yeah, they're blessed. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Ed and Lorraine Warren are among the most well-known, if not the most well-known, paranormal investigators in the world. Having managed thousands of cases and considered to be prominent figures in demonology, they are pioneers of the paranormal community who paved the way for all future investigators and conversations to be had about what the spirit world is truly capable of. For more than 50 years, they sought to help those plagued by demons and spirits alike. It is believed that they have investigated over 10,000 different cases of paranormal activity. Although they have both passed away, Ed in 2006 and Lorraine in 2019, their stories, legacy, and collection of haunted artifacts still live on in infamy. Some of their most famous cases of the direct inspiration of the Conjuring Universe film franchise, which now has become the highest grossing horror franchise in history, with more than two billion dollars at the box office alone. Annabelle, The Conjuring, Amityville Horror, Enfield Poltergeist, Devil Made Me Do It, all of which have been based off of their true cases and documentation with most of these artifacts being preserved within the Warren Museum. The location we are not only visiting, but conducting an eight hour paranormal investigation of tonight. And yes, that means all throughout 3 a.m. Yet before we enter any location, we always seek to learn as much as we can about it. So we may have the best understanding of what we are facing. The history and importance of the Warren Museum, not only to our investigation, but the impact it had across the world cannot be understated. Truly, if not for Ed and Lorraine, I do not believe this YouTube channel would exist as they helped allow the love of paranormal to become normal. Ed specialized in demonology and Lorraine possessed supernatural abilities herself as a psychic, medium, and clairvoyant. Their combination of research, paranormal investigations, science, and religion allowed them to hold a well-rounded and unique understanding 
of the world that lives beyond death. Becoming so renowned for his abilities to exorcise demons and evil spirits, religious authorities would call on him and Lorraine to assist in their worst cases. As their cases and evidence compounded, their need to be thoroughly organized grew. This led to the development and creation of the New England Society for Psychic Research, founded in 1952, became the first ghost hunting group in New England and spawned a path for future groups. The goal was to combine religion with science to study the paranormal. The Warren's investigation's work began to shift more towards the expelling of spirits, demons, and conducting exorcisms. At a time when stories of the paranormal were whispered at the loudest, Ed and Lorraine opened up the conversation about the devil, God, and the afterlife. They brought conversations about darkness to the public light. With over 10,000 cases they worked on with military, law enforcement, the church, reporters, and researchers, there was no shortage of information they were willing to present. Now, the true artifacts of their decades of research are held within their home, the Nesper headquarters, and the infamous Warren Museum. Each item with its own history, from some of the most remarkable and terrifying cases. We will have the chance to continue seeking answers and evidence from the same items Ed and Lorraine once did. And yes, that includes Annabelle. You know about the place, you've been here in the past, and you did a very, very good investigation, all you guys. First of all, uh, the Overnight Channel is probably the best channel for paranormal research that you're gonna find oh, that's awesome. out there. Hey, thanks, uh, man. Uh, second only to the uh, Warren's official uh, YouTube channel, which is mine, <laughs> <laughs> which is my channel. <laughs> so, Agreed. I had it for a while. Uh, yeah, yeah. For a while there, you loved, he was like my brother for a while. <laughs> and now it's any hates me. Oh, well, no, no. so nice. So, if you want to learn about the paranormal, you start there. You start with the overnight YouTube uh, channel. Yeah. Subscribe to it. Uh, because it's one of the best. I even watch it, and I've been in it, in this business for 40 years, and dude, I that's watch all, it. Thanks, man. Hey, that, that's really cool to hear, This guy's contacted me four years ago, and uh, yep. we wouldn't let him in here. I didn't think. Honestly, we were, I didn't think. I didn't think you guys were ready yet at that point. But great decision. You know, that we, we guys yeah, actually great. contacted you. I think with the right time. So they're, they're down to earth guys. And they really are serious about what they do. Are you wearing that bucket hat in like five minutes? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, they're actually imparting knowledge to the newcomers, to the people who don't know a lot about paranormal investigating. So this is the shadow doll, built specifically to harm a person. A bird feathers has hair. It has a human tooth, an animal bone. It has chains and, and, and uh, nails coming out of it. So knowledgeable in sorcery and wizardry would use that to get to somebody they don't like. Come whatever I want them to be, sick, just sick, maybe ill, or, or to die. Whose hat is he wearing, by the way? That's Mr. Lawrence. By the way, That's yeah, it is, it is it's, it's, it's one of Ed's hats. Yeah, the plan is to be in here and do a nightly investigation, like you said, during the, yeah. the witching hours. Yeah. Um, so we'll have all of our devices, we'll probably store them in, in Ed's office and yeah. keep everything charged. And 10 So meals. how much could a million dollars buy? 10 yeah. million meals. Yeah, it'd be yeah. 10 million meals. So every single time someone subscribes to the channel, they're also, that's also meal donated. Yeah. Honestly, I'm hoping we can get to a million dollars raised. That's, that's actually what I'm, I'm hoping for. Do you think that like something could happen to us. I'm glad you brought that up, Corey. Things are gonna start happening without you even conjuring up something. It's just gonna happen because it's gonna sense that you're in here, you've been in this, this long, you're gonna become, you're gonna go through a weakened stage. And once you get into that weakened stage, that's when it's really attractive to you. You will get to a point where you're at a weakened stage. You guys might start fighting against each other because that's what it wants. It's to cause discord, it wants to cause havoc, chaos in your lives. Your goal is good, they yeah. hate that. Oh, that's, that's interesting. That's not a good goal for them. They hate oh, that. Oh, that's so interesting. Oh no, they hate that. They, a devil or a demon? Yeah, yeah, They don't want you to do anything good for the human race. Oh, I didn't even think about that at all. So what right you're now. doing, Oh, that's really weird. What okay. you're doing is godlike. They don't like godlike things. They hate it. They hate okay. you. 
They hate me, they hate Dan, they hate all human beings. To tune in for as long as they can because something may never happen for an hour, two, three, four. All of a sudden, if they look away, something yeah. can bad, I mean, something that we gotta be addressed can happen, yeah. you know. Anyway, I gotta go. There's Evan, more reasons why we're gonna be here. Guys, yeah. Dan, I gotta go. Dan, yeah, right. yeah, we'll lock up, right? we'll lock up. We'll let you guys do your thing. I'm a little freaked out. Okay. Are you? Yeah, you are. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. This is on camera, guys. This this might be the first time this yeah, is come happening. Over, come over, come over, Elton's scared. I don't want them to hear it because I feel like if they hear it, then they're gonna be like, maybe they shouldn't be here tonight. Standing over there. Uh huh. I've been fine the whole time. The one and only time tonight that I have looked Annabelle directly in the eyes. I like right. literally. I, I I I'm not even gonna do it right now. I'm not. I'm not choking. I'm literally not gonna look at her right now. The one and only time I looked at her, I felt this whole side of my head just start hurting. I literally did that because I felt a spider. And I was doing everything I could to not just start crying right then and there. What? I was just like focusing on Tony and just listening to Tony and listening to Tony and being like, dude, I was holding it back. It was the weirdest shit ever. It, it like, it genuinely, it, yeah. The most haunted and infamous doll in history. At a glance, Annabelle looks like an ordinary Raggedy Ann doll. However, it is anything but ordinary. This doll is said to be responsible for the death of a young man and for causing pain and suffering to anyone that challenges it, never holding back. The Warrens acquired the doll in 1970 from a student nurse shortly after the terrifying tale began. Purchased as a present by Angie for her daughter, Donna, the new gift was placed on her bed as would any pillow or stuffed animal and it wasn't long after that they would begin to notice strange and unsettling occurrences happening around the doll. Donna would sleep with the doll tucked into her arms and over time she began to include it in more of her daily activities. As the doll became more at home they began realizing that when no one was watching it it would move. Unexplainable it would disappear and reappear sometimes with its legs crossed, arms folded or even standing perfectly up. Upright. Annabelle not only moved, but was capable of writing and leaving messages. After a month of noticing her moving in different rooms, pieces of paper lying around would begin to appear, despite there being no parchment paper in the home. The words would say things like, help us, or help Lou, with the writing style, as if it were a child. The possibility of it being Donna playing a trick on her mother was finally discarded, and she came home to uncover the doll covered in blood on its hands and chest. Without having any idea where it could have come from, they sought out help from someone skilled in the paranormal. They were introduced to a medium that could help understand more about Annabelle and who or what might be inhabiting the doll. Upon meeting the medium, a seance was held with the doll. And this was the beginning of many. Through the medium, they got the name Annabelle Higgins, who was the spirit of a seven-year-old girl whose body was found on the property where their apartment was. This opened the door to active communication with the doll and the girls, sending them down a path of no return. The rule of spirits and demons is, once you begin to acknowledge them, they know, and they will continue to make themselves known. Once this door is open, it is extremely hard to close again. The medium expressed that Annabelle wanted to stay with them and be loved because she felt comfortable around them. What took things to the next level is when the girls began to return late at night after work and they would find the doll standing waiting for them. It was when a fiance of one of the girls began to state that they should burn and throw out the doll. Did violence and aggressive activity begin? After this proclamation, the fiance had gone to sleep with the doll across the room from him and in the room the girls were playing. They called out to Annabelle and said, come help us clean up. And as they said that, the fiance woke up from a nightmare and exclaimed that he had dreamed Annabelle was strangling him. And as he said that, Marks appeared. He then threw the doll and he said, you're just a doll. You can't hurt anyone. However, he was mistaken. There were slashes that appeared on his torso and blood seeped through his shirt. The girls and their fiance then called Father Richard Nolan, who in turn called the Warrens to help him investigate. The Warrens, after meeting the girls, argued that God doesn't allow the spirit of a child to enter a doll. Instead, Ed Warren said it was a devil or a demon that entered the doll and was impersonating a child. They said the doll was in fact manipulated by something inhuman, and thus the girls should relinquish the doll to them. They then performed an exorcism over the house and over the people within it. After Ed Warren brought Annabelle back to his home, he had it sitting nearby one day. 
day when a priest came to visit. The priest mocked the doll and threw it, just as the fiancé did. He proclaimed that God is more powerful than the devil. However, Ed noted that the priest was not a god, but a man. Unfortunately, the priest, on his way home, in a brand new car, almost got into an accident with a tractor trailer that nearly claimed his life. His car was demolished, and the priest mentioned that as the accident happened, all he could see was the doll. Another incident occurred with Annabelle before she was placed under special holy protection. A detective was visiting the Warrens to get help on a case, and noticed the doll sitting nearby. He kept saying that he couldn't take his eyes off of it. During this time, the phone suddenly rang, and Ed warned the detective to touch nothing in the room. After about 10 minutes while Ed was still on the phone, he heard sounds of the detective moving out of the room and through the passageway. When he saw the detective, he was sweating and trembling. He wouldn't speak to Ed about what had happened, but did to Lorraine. It was found out that he ended up picking up the doll. When Ed returned to the main room, he found things knocked over and it looked like a battle had ensued. Just by touching the doll, it can change your life because it mingles with the energy of anyone that touches it and is said to taint it. This particular detective, after touching the doll, ended up resigning from the police force and moved across the country to California. Annabelle is now housed in a holy box with three crosses around it and holy water surrounding it at all times. This box is said to keep the doll from wreaking havoc. Even even with all of these warnings and protections surrounding the doll, a group of college students visited the museum, and one of the young men came to the room, up to the doll, tapped the glass, and challenged it to do its worst to him, because he didn't believe that it could. Ed Warren sent him out of the building. Nearly three hours after challenging the doll, the man was proclaimed dead through an accident. The young man was driving his motorcycle with his girlfriend on the back, laughing about the doll, and he suddenly went out of control and died instantly when he hit a tree. His girlfriend survived. However, she was hospitalized for over a year. After all of these occurrences, it was clear that protection had to be in place as well as caution to anyone that decided to visit the museum. One thing is clear. You never challenge anything that is a part of this room, especially not animal. Head in. If you hear any screams, don't come and help. Just let it happen. Just Who's let it safe? happen. Tonight is a super moon. We had no plans of being here today. This was so last minute. It all just happened. We happen to be here right now on a super moon. And that's known to spike activity. I can't begin to like state how surreal this is. I know. That we're here again. You know what's crazy? Yeah. It's because of you guys. I know. Think of all it's that. Thank you guys. That's very true. Seriously. I'm gonna cry. What? I just watched a motion sensor light turn on on the patio. I just watched the light turn on. This is insane. We have the coolest lives ever. Dude, my heart's racing right now. And guys, we have so many new tools with us. It's insane that we get to use these tools for the first time in the Warren Museum. Right. Ooh, dude, every, I don't mean any disrespect, but every time, dude, every time I look at Annabelle tonight, I just keep getting major, like, and I immediately just look away. Like I've been scared to look. Okay. Literally what I'm the most excited about tonight is putting this back on top of the shadow doll because we left this here for months accidentally because this literally was an item <laughs> from the Warren Museum in a way. And can we flip to red light? Spooky? Yeah. As if it's not spooky enough. Whoa. What? My hand is soaked. Out of nowhere. Feel that. Let's set these up. They're all REM pods. Yeah. They look different, but they all have the exact same function in it. Yeah. Place them throughout the room. Let's see if any certain area is calling our attention first. It's back home. They all work. Put it right in between. All four are on. To all of the spirits and energies and entities in this building. My name is Corey. 
I'm not sure if you remember us, but we have been here before and we've had conversations with many of you. I would like you to know that we mean no disrespect at all. We are only here to talk about you, to talk with you, and to learn about you. And if there's anyone or anything in here that would like to communicate with us tonight, please put your energy into our devices and make them go off. I'm here tonight, open and willing to communicate with anyone or anything in here. You do not have permission nor the ability to stay with me beyond those doors. But as long as we are within these walls, within this room, in the wooden walls and doors, That was that. Then I am open to speaking with you. Whatever message it is that you might have. I just felt my cross necklace like move. Like it was like, I'm gonna pull it off you already. How did this just move? I don't know, but what's kind of weird is, look, angel statue, angel board, angel statue, heard the noise right there, and then that just happened to my cross. The last time we were here, the ovulus started working in front of Annabelle, and it had a final message. So I know whatever's in here, whichever it was that was in here, mm -hmm. knows how to use this. Still don't want to look at her in the eyes. I know, and I just did. The last time we were here. We believe that Annabelle, whatever may be inside of it, was draining the battery and destroying every single device we had. And there was a final message you delivered that we didn't get to see. I'm hoping that maybe tonight you can say what it is. Shadow doll. Carbon. Are you seeking flesh? Human touch? Hmm. Why, brain? Phew. Phew. Do you think that that means that that was the shadow doll that just set that off? Or do you think that that was a different spirit around here? Members. Few members. Chain. Okay, you just asked. There's a chain hanging from the shadow doll. So there's your answer. I was saying earlier that a low level demon allows you to bring in members yeah to call in the rest shadow doll had its members just make that go off to bring us over because it can't touch it because it's in the box you know what i think it is what each beware beware if each one of these items has a low level demonic entity inside of it Mm -hmm. And they're all bound to their form. And this is trapped in the box. Yeah. If the shadow doll were ever to be removed from the box, would it be able to unite everyone together? Probably. What do we need to be aware of? What's the message from the shadow doll? Beware of what? I said we just go right for it. And what? EVP? Yeah. Yeah. Raw. raw. Beware of the raw. Project. Raw project. Or project. Ready? Three, two. Do you remember us? We want to confirm that the entity attached to the shadow doll is the one making the threat to beware of. Do you remember this box sitting on top of you that we left here? If you were ever to be let free of this box, what would you do? Ending. Do you remember us? We want to confirm that the entity attached to the shadow doll is the 
one making the threat to be aware of. of. Do you remember this box sitting on top of you that we left here? If you were ever to be let free of this box, what would you do? What? That was like... Do you remember us? We want to confirm that the entity attached to the shadow doll is the one making the threat to be aware of. 